Peace everyone, Unmask Art here and welcome back to another colored pencil tutorial. Today is part two of the uh, Fantasy Druid project. And uh, for those of you joining me on YouTube, this would have normally just been a Patreon exclusive tutorial, but for the past week now I've been uh, live streaming all of my private tutorials publicly so that uh, you guys have something something hopefully entertaining to watch uh, while the whole world is on lockdown. Um, trying to, to stay in high spirits and positive and all of that. So uh, welcome uh, Eliza and Sketch Cantation. Hopefully I said that correctly. Um, welcome, welcome. Uh, so I'm just gonna get right into this. Uh, last week we did a little bit of the outlining and then I focused on doing the earth, and today I'm going to focus on the skin. So I'm gonna just grab a, grab a color here. I only have a few colors for the skin, for now anyway. I don't actually know if this is gonna be enough, but it's gonna be enough for today. And uh, one of the things that I added to my druid here is I gave her kind of elf ears. Um, so she's a, a druid elf, I guess. Oh, hey there, Chrissy. It's been a long time. It's been a long time since I saw you. So so glad so glad to see you. So glad to see you. Um, absolutely, Leslie. My pleasure to to share. I I enjoy sharing. I like hanging out with all of you guys. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use this darkish brown color to start putting in some of the the dark shapes of her face, like the nostril here, and just kind of work things out a little bit. Uh, maybe her, her eyes also, or well, I guess she just has one eye since it's profile view. but I'm just gonna delicately kind of put these features in. Just make sure everything's where I want it. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions for me, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Always happy to take on some questions. Um, I'm, I'm jamming out to a little bit of music right now. It's copyrighted, so unfortunately you guys can't enjoy it as well. Although I doubt many of you would enjoy it right now. But um, yeah, I enjoy it, so. Uh, best tips on blending. Uh, the best tips on blending I have is take your time. That is going to be the most important feature in your blending technique. If you try to apply the pencil too quickly, you're just not going to get the results that you want. And the, the true secret to creating good art is patience. That is really all you need. Anything beyond that is just fluff. I try. I'll try to keep up with chat. <laughs> oh, shiny! You'd, yeah, you yeah. You might like the music, shiny. Yeah, I'm listening to Kill Switch Engage right now. So I imagine maybe a maybe a couple of you would enjoy it. Hey there, uh, Sergio, Monica, uh, Diane, who else did I miss? 
I think that's I think that's everyone for now. I'm just taking my time applying applying my color nice and slowly, just kind of getting things mapped out. Um, and that's about it. So that's pretty much where her face ends. All of that. Kind of outline the ear a little bit. There. And now I'm just kind of start shading lightly start shading in the skin some of the shadows just kind of map things out a little bit oh hey there john um will i draw the whole picture with polychromos yes most likely i will i will be drawing this only using polychromos um just because just because no real reason just because uh, how is my lovely wife doing? Uh, she is doing good. She is working from home. Uh, she's been working from home for a couple weeks now. And yeah, so she's in the kitchen working. I guarantee you that, I don't know, maybe within the next half hour, for sure at least once during this live stream, you're going to hear her sneeze. Um, I don't know. I think she's allergic to me live streaming because uh, every... Uh, f f every live stream that I've had since she's been working from home, uh, at least once during the live stream, she sneezes. And uh, many of you can attest to that on Tuesday, fr from Tuesday as well. Oh, hey there, Grandpa Steve. Good to see you. Been a long time. I feel like, I feel like it's been a, a way too long. Way too long to, to see you. Glad you were able to make it. Uh, what kind of paper am I using? I am using the fantastic Strathmore Multimedia Toned Gray Paper. This paper is fantastic. I really, really like working with colored pencils on this paper. <clears throat> yes, all is all is well here. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Yeah, everything is everything is good. Um I uh, you know, I'm I'm used to staying indoors for long periods of time, so not not a whole lot in my life has changed with the exception that my wife now works from home. Which is kind of nice because well, she gets home from work all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I am, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm in an abnormally good mood today. I'm not sure what it is. I've been playing chess all morning. I had um, a private lesson earlier this morning as well, uh, which was really nice. And um, I mean, other than that, not a whole lot going on. Yesterday, yesterday I, I streamed playing chess for six and a half hours. <laughs> and it was so bad. Oh, it was terrible. It was just the worst. Um, I was... Uh, I had completely lost my patience. I was just losing so much. I was just, I was basically losing every single game. I think in, I think in the six and a half hours of, of playing, um, 
I won maybe four, maybe five games. It was just awful. <laughs> really, really bad. Uh, when blending colored pencils, uh, what determines using a, a solvent or not using solvent? Honestly, what determines it usually just depends on my mood. Uh, I'm, I enjoy using solvent to an extent, but at the end of the day, sometimes I just don't want to sit around waiting for my paper to dry. And uh, part of the reason I'm using Polychromos is because you can just use a pen, uh, a paper blender to uh, blend them out and it, it just works really, really well. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing on this project is I, I'm just gonna be using this paper blender and uh, smoothing out my colored pencils. It takes a little bit more time to get like the full layers. Try not to spit on my drawing. Um, but at the end of the day, I really like using the polychromos in this method. It's, it's almost like using them as though they're graphite. Uh, do I use Stonehenge paper for colored pencils? I did. Actually, Stonehenge paper was my like favorite go-to um, colored pencil paper. Uh, it was the Stonehenge vellum paper. <clears throat> but uh, I was no, I was no longer able to um, order it. I, I, I had to order it from Amazon Deutschland, and I just couldn't find it on there anymore. And I was like, "Well, I guess I'm just gonna use the uh, the Strathmore." And so I haven't, yeah, I haven't used it in a while. But it was always one of my favorite. Yes, I agree. Chess is chess is is very difficult. I, w I would go beyond uh, kind of difficult and say very difficult, and I, I that's what I love most about playing chess. So for those of you that might be following along on this project, um, I'm just applying light layers of some brown, a little bit of orange, and then I'm going to use some black for some of the darker shadows. But essentially, I'm going to just be kind of covering the entire skin here. And I'm just going to alternate my colors. Everything that I didn't originally color in blue, I'm essentially going to be coloring in with the brown and this orange here. <clears throat> oh, did Jackson's finally get the stone, Stonehenge vellum? I just assumed it was like out of stock, but it was out of stock for like a year and a half, so. Yeah, using the, the paper blender with polychromos is maybe one of my favorite new things that I kind of um, started doing more of recently. You can use, the, you can even use the paper blender a little bit on on the Prismacolor and Luminance, the you know, waxier base, but it just doesn't work as well. It works really, really well with the Polychromos though. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of black just to uh, just to bring in some of the darker values a little bit into the face. You gotta be you gotta be careful with black anytime you add it to skin. So I'm gonna do it very sparingly. I 
add it to the nostril. Can add it to the eyelashes as well. Uh, don't forget to thumbs up if you're enjoying the video. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I always forget to remind people. Give the live stream the thumbs up if you enjoy it. And uh, give it a share as, as well. You know, share it on Facebook if you want. I, I really appreciate you guys coming by and hanging out. Uh, it makes my day, you know, makes my day really fun. So thank you for that. <clears throat> let's see, let's go a little bit darker inside the ear. Let's put a little bit of black there. And then I'm going to go back over it with uh, the dark brown. Have I been watching any interesting movies or shows? Um, I suppose you could call the movies I've been watching interesting. They were awful. Uh, some of the worst movies that I've ever seen. Uh, the first one was um, The Way Back. And even though Ben Affleck acted really good the movie itself was just terribly written it was just so poorly written um it 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 couldn't decide whether it wanted it to be like a redemption story a sports movie or a drama it was just all over the place and by the end of the movie you're like what i was like at the end of the movie i was like that movie was terrible um and then, uh, what was the movie? We watched two movies that night. We watched one right after it. Um, oh, what was the name of that gosh darn movie? It was so bad. I shouldn't even say the name if I remember it. I can't remember it. It was just so bad. Uh, does using the blender stump prevent you from layering more? No, absolutely not. No. Uh, at no point am I pressing really hard with either my pencils or or the blender. So it it just gives me like infinite layer potential. That's, that's hilarious, Grandpa Steve. Yeah. I stare out the window a lot. I, in fact, almost at least once a day, but almost every morning, I, I'll just stand at my, my kitchen window and stare out there. We've been having some of the craziest weather here. It, it like, snowed. It was, it was like, chilly. It, it snowed. It was, like, pretty blue skies all in the same day. It was crazy. First time on the live stream. Well, welcome, John. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate that.
I'm slowly building up like the contours of her face. I'm not rushing anything, just kind of very, very slowly letting the colors build up until her face starts to have a bit more contour. So like I'm gonna go a little bit darker right here on her cheekbone, just bring out her cheekbone a little bit. Right in here. Let's see, kind of darken up her nose a little. And grab my blender again and start smoothing some of the colors out. And I'm just going to kind of repeat this process over and over again until I I get the color and I get the values that I'm looking for. One of the really great things about this method is that it's super forgiving. If you happen to go, you know, a little bit too dark somewhere, or you just kind of want to start over a little bit, you can grab your your eraser, your kneaded eraser, and really kind of um, pick up a lot of the colored pencil. So there's, there's a lot of correction that you can actually do with this, um, with this method. Oh, hey there, Shanvi. Uh, would it be possible to zoom in a little bit? Yeah, let me do that for you. Is that better? There. I thought that I'd be doing like more of the arm and stuff. Let me make sure it's in focus now. There. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Let's add a little bit more orange. Oh, hey there, Mache. Good to see you. No need to apologize, Mache. All 
Alright, let's go a little bit more orange in here. Not too bad for essentially two colors. Plus black, you know? Two colors plus black, just a brown and orange. There we go, just building up the values even more. Uh, yes, I have the 120 set of polychromos if that, if I may have missed that question somewhere. One of the uh, subtle drawbacks to blending with the paper blender is that it does lift off uh, a bit of the colored pencil pigment. And so you have to like kind of fight the, um, like go back and forth and kind of battle that constant light um, because it kind of lightens the color a little bit. And so getting that getting that balance can sometimes sometimes be a little tricky. Oh, hey there, Rob. Uh, so the color, the exact color, is in fact terracotta. It is, that is the exact color. So very good, Grandpa Steve. It is exactly terracotta. And the brown is... Uh, Kaput Matum Violet Mortum Kaput Mortum Violet. I am pretty sure I'm mispronouncing the color of this brown. <laughs> but it's violet. That's that's weird. That's that ninja purple sneaking in there. I did it was so sneaky I didn't even know I was using it. Please pronounce it again. <laughs> Kaput Mortem Violet. <laughs> Beautiful color, terrible name. <laughs> Uh, 
That looks pretty good. One thing for sure, I gotta get her top, I gotta give her a top lip. She's uh, struggling. See if I can accentuate her bottom lip a little bit and some white. It's a bit too small, um, like the drawing itself for me to get that little bit of detail, like right around her nose and stuff. It's really tricky. Just kind of have to put in a little bit of color and blend it out and hope for the best, I guess. That's not bad looking. All right, uh, let's see, I'm gonna add a little bit, a little bit more black, I think. Some of the darker area back here. A little bit over top of her ear, into her cheek, her uh, cheekbone there. Just go a little bit darker. Go back to the brown, kind of uh, blend it into the ear a bit more. Just have it kind of gradually going into the ear. Smooth it out, and yeah, I think I like that. I like the way that looks. Still not totally satisfied with her cheek here, where her cheek and her nose kind of meet the lip. Just not, it's just not looking the way that I want it to look. Could I use some, actually I'm gonna use a little bit of blue for the highlight on the top part of your cheek, or top part of her lip here. Uh, without going searching, did you ever do a stream on how you used Photoshop? Yes. Yes, I did. Uh, it would have been last year, right around this time, actually. Can't remember the name of it. Cannot remember the name of it. But I, yeah, I did a few examples of doing line art, um, how to do, how I do line art in Photoshop and all of that. Alright, I'm going to move this up and work on her arm. Essentially, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to start with the the kaput, the kaput brown, the kaput violet color. Just get some color there.
Oh, did I miss a, a question? Uh, what's the main difference between a paper stump and a colorless pencil blender? Uh, the, well, the biggest difference is what it's made out of. So the, the paper blender is just made out of paper. The colorless blender is actually made out of the uh, wax that is used in the pencils. So uh, there is, it's not just wax, but it's mainly wax. So the components in colored pencils, there's essentially three. There's the pigment that makes the color, the wax or the binder that kind of like holds it together, and then a little bit of oil and whatnot. Um, and so that's, a, that's essentially what makes up the core of a colored pencil. And uh, the colorless blender is essentially all of that minus the pigment. And so it's just kind of that waxiness. And when you blend with it, um, see with the, with the paper blender, you are kind of spreading out the pigment. With the colorless blender, you're not so much spreading as you are like mushing. You're kind of like mushing the, the, the pigment and then like moving it around. And so the distance that you're going to get with a colorless blender is not as far. Like you're not gonna be able to spread it as far because you're kind of mushing it into the paper with that extra wax. The, the colorless blender, I feel like, I feel like it's more of a, uh, a smooth finish as opposed to an actual blend that you get with it. So I like to, I like to use it in skin and eyes and things. Uh, when I have all of my colors laid down, I can use it to kind of smooth it out without altering the, uh, the values and the saturation of of the colors that I lay down. Um, oh, I had a question from last week's live stream uh, because she has these highlights, uh, the, the highlight on the back of her arm here, which obviously is counterintuitive if the light source is the earth. Uh, and that's just because there's not just one light source. There's more than there's, there's more than the earth being a light source here. So if you're wondering, you no longer need to wonder. Mystery solved. I mean, I don't have any like story or reason for this particular image. I uh, just thought it was kind of a neat idea. And I found this cool picture of this lady. Um, and I used the picture of the lady and then I added the planet and did some Photoshopping to the image to kind of just make it look, just make it look neat. I wouldn't say the colorless blender crushes the tooth of the paper. I mean, it would if you pushed really hard, but the, the, the colorless blender is going to act like another layer. It's gonna feel like another layer of pencil. And so the, the more layers you put down, you know, the less you can put on top of it. So the, the paper blender doesn't have that effect. It doesn't have the effect of like feeling like another layer of pencil, whereas the colorless blender does, because it is, it is another layer of pencil. It is literally a pencil with no pigment. Like I said, I don't think that the colorless blender should even be called colorless blender. I think it should just be called like a pigment smoother or something because as I as I described it doesn't really blend colors together as much as it just kind of smooths them out it's a good way to get rid of like uh, some pencil grain 
Oh, you take care, Chrissy. I'm glad you were able to stop by and say hello. It was really nice to see you. Oh, hey there, Stefania. It's, uh, it's very nice to see you as well. I know, I know things have been pretty, pretty crazy over there in, in Italy, so it's, it's really nice to hear from you. I'm glad, glad you're doing okay. Got a little bit of the brown in. Let's go back to the terracotta. Bring in some orange color. This is actually going, I feel like this is going a lot faster than I anticipated. I don't know, I've only been streaming for like a half hour or something like that. Yeah, I bet I bet it's really really difficult over there. Now for a little bit of black, for some of those dark spots. Well, that's a nice that's a nice positive spin on things, Stefania. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad at the very least you're getting a little bit more time doing some art. Let's add some more kaput. <laughs> kaput. This is, I'm never going to get over this color. Such a weird color. Such a weird name for a color. There we go. 
once we do a little bit of smoothing out with the blender, everything should start to come together a little bit. So grab my paper blender and just start smoothing it out. Get rid of some of that pencil grain, make it look more skin-like. And then once we're done with this arm, I just have this this uh, other arm over here that you can't really see right now, but it's there. Am I using Polychromos right now? Yes, I am using Polychromos. The, uh, the colors I've been using are Kaput, uh, Violet, and uh, terracotta, and then black, yeah. The the kaput, what is the other part of it? Kaput Mortem Violet. Such a goofy name. Yeah. That's that darkish brown red color. Is her hand kind of missing fingertips? Uh, no, they're not missing fingertips. It, the, the blue might be a little hard to see on camera. You know, I've tried like a million different setups for my live stream to try to get like it to show up the best I can. I spent like a ton on that camera that you see this and I just, I, I don't know. I don't know how to get it to show up uh, as good as it looks in person but no she has her fingertips they're outlined in white because the the earth is kind of glowing and there's a there's light uh, but um, part of the reason is I haven't gotten to smooth out some of the maybe if I smooth them out then, then I'll show up a little bit better the paper I am using is the Drathmore multimedia toned gray paper. Yeah, I was I was talking about the Stonehenge earlier, and I almost called it Stonehenge paper. No, this is Strathmore multimedia toned gray. This is a super super lovely paper, and if you've never used it before, I highly recommend trying it out. Oh, is that what that is that what that means in uh, Latin, Diane? Head head dead violet. That is super. That makes the name even weirder. Sorry to ask again, no need to apologize, but how does the multimedia tone compare to the Strathmore art again toned? Oh, I, I couldn't tell you. Um, the one thing about this paper, uh, this is 300 GSM paper, so it's, it's very stiff, it's very thick, it's gonna take like wet mediums really well and not like buckle and curl and stuff. Uh, that's, I think the biggest, uh, biggest difference. No, I, I understand, I understand Steve. 
No, no worries. Yeah, I, I imagine it's a little difficult to see because the the blue is very close to the the gray of the paper. It's not it's not super obvious. Uh, same thing with her face. I'm not really I'm not really fond of how it it turned out since the you can you can't really see the white all that well uh, around her lips which is unfortunate she has really nice lips and uh, just wasn't able to capture them that great Oh, that's that's cool, Marcy. I didn't know that uh, museums were doing like virtual tours. That that sounds like something really cool to check out. Yeah, I don't I don't know about the art again paper, uh, Katie. Yeah, I've never used it before. But I can assure you that the multi-medium paper is fantastic. That is what I can tell you. Uh, they have they have the regular sketch paper, the um, the toned gray and toned tan sketch paper, which is much much thinner than this. Uh, and even that paper is really great to use. I I even like that paper even though it's super thin, and I've used markers on it. Uh, I've used watercolor pencils on it. Um, I've used ink on it and of course colored pencils and it works fantastic. Even even as flimsy as it is it still took like a whole bunch of water when I used watercolor pencils on it. It was it was really impressive actually. Ooh, the toned blue multimedia, that sounds interesting. That sounds like a fun paper to use. Yeah, I didn't know that they had toned blue. I don't even remember when I bought the pack of this paper here. It's been quite some time. Uh, the GSM, this one is 300 GSM, so it's quite thick. There we go. I think I might add a little bit of white to the highlights here. Um, I want them to be blue, but at the same time, like I have this kind of white outline that just sticks out a little bit too much. And so I'm gonna just try to fade it into it, 
fade it into the blue a little bit and hopefully that will make the highlights just feel a little bit more natural. A little bit on her cheek here. Let's bring out that highlight. Yeah, that looks, I feel like that looks a lot better actually. Um, are you asking if this paper here works like it's like it's a sanded texture? Uh, if that's the case, no. This I would say that this paper actually feels like a better version of watercolor paper. Um, I'm I've I've never been a fan of using watercolor paper uh, with colored pencils. I, I I there's just something about it that just is very unappealing to me. I'm not, I can't put my finger on it exactly. I think part of it is the, the kind of the give that the paper has. Like when you press something in into it, kind of squeezes kind of like a sponge. Um, I don't know. I, I am just, I'm just saying something because honestly, I don't know what it is. I just never been a fan of watercolor paper. And um, I would say this probably is closer to watercolor paper than it is sanded, a sanded surface at all. Um, but it has no give. It's very stiff. And it's, um, it's much smoother than watercolor paper, which is another reason. Oh, another reason I don't like watercolor paper is the pattern, the stamping pattern. Uh, I just don't like the stamp pattern of watercolor paper. Even hot press watercolor paper still has like um, like this rippled kind of pattern to it uh, that I just can't can't stand. All right, so hopefully, let's see this. Okay, th this is where her arm's at, so I'm just gonna slide it up. Oh, hey there, Jesse. Good to see you. Is it less smooth than Strathmore vellum? Yes. Uh, or, or no, no, Strathmore Vellum? Wait, Vellum Bristol. I don't, I, I don't, is there such thing as Vellum Bristol? Sounds, that's like hot press, cold press, right? Am I mistaken there? I don't know. I don't know if there is a such thing as vellum bristol. I think vellum is a type of paper. Bristol is a type of paper. I could be wrong. <laughs> but I would say this has more tooth to it than the bristol paper. Um, it's very close to vellum paper. Uh, all right, let's get into this arm, this last arm here. There was, there's a highlight here, but I kind of don't like it, so I'm just gonna ignore it. Um, I'm gonna just highlight the back of her arm a little bit more, because there's three lights. There's the earth, there's a, a kind of a rim light back here, and then there's a, a floor light shining up at her. Yeah, do that, and then just grab the uh, kaput mortem. <laughs> and then this is where her moss dress comes in, and so I'm just gonna kind of give that a little shape there. Bristol vellum, 
Huh. Yeah, I've never heard of it before. I I couldn't I couldn't comment on the texture of Bristol vellum. Yeah. Oh, hey there, Rain. Yeah, you're a little late today, but that's okay. Better late than never. Good to see you. All right, let's add a little bit of the terracotta now. You guys are up early in California, goodness. I appreciate waking up and, and, and watching, watching the live stream. All right, let's add a little bit of black before we, before we move on to another layer. Just uh, add some Kind of place some of the darker shadows, is what I'm doing here. And then her elbow, kind of, there's a little dark spot right in here where her elbow's at. And then down here, a little bit darker. And then the main, the main shadow is kind of like here across like just below her tricep and kind of starts to wrap around her bicep a little bit. So kind of right in here. So just a little bit of black there. And then I'll do a bit of black up here where the moss is covering her shoulder a little bit. Um, how am I dealing with the lockdown? To be honest with you, um, it's probably one of the easiest things I have to deal with because I've, I almost never leave my flat anyway, aside to go grocery shopping, which I still do because, you know, people still need to go grocery shopping. Um, and I mean, I, I have been kind of going a little stir crazy anyway, regardless of the lockdown, because, um, I've I've applied for my permanent residency here in Poland, and when you uh, when they're deciding your fate, you're not allowed to leave the country. So uh, even before the lockdown, I was locked down to the country, and I've I've been really wanting to get away for a little bit, wanting to plan a trip. Uh, I wanted to go back to the United States in the end of June. Um, but uh, that's not going to happen for a couple reasons now. <laughs> um, but aside from that, I, I've been doing fine. Just, uh, I, think, I think the hardest thing is I've been struggling to like fall asleep and wake up. That, like when I, when I lay down to go to sleep, it's, it just feels impossible to shut my brain off. It's just going a thousand miles an hour. And last night, 
last night I was like, oh, I'm, I, I was so exhausted. I was so exhausted from last night because I, I basically played chess. If I wasn't playing chess, I was studying chess because I had a class last night, a chess class with my chess coach. And um, pretty much from like 10-ish in the morning until midnight, I was playing chess. Um, and so, yeah, a, a lot of chess. And I was just so mentally exhausted and, and just physically exhausted as well. And uh, when I laid down, I thought, I'm just gonna be able to fall right to sleep. I couldn't keep my eyes closed and I couldn't shut my gosh darn brain off. But beyond that, everything's, everything's been going good. It's nice to have my, my wife around all the time too. She's always home since she works from home now. So that's kind of nice. This is the worst looking arm I've ever... I've got, to, I've, got to, I've got to smooth out some of these rough parts on the arm here. <laughs> I get some water. All this talking, making my mouth dry. Uh, up for another match of chess? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm. I'm always on. I'm always online anymore playing chess. So uh, try taking magnesium glycinate. It's natural muscle relaxer. Okay, I'll, I'll look into that. It's not necessarily like muscle relaxer. Um, I have a very hyperactive mind. Just. Uh, it's, it runs just constantly, like, so much. It's really, really hard to describe it. It's, imagine, essentially, at all times, even now, um, I'm drawing, I'm talking to you guys, I'm listening to music, uh, I'm doing all these things, but still my mind is a TV that just chooses not to pick a channel it's just constant and um it's it's always been like that my entire life it's just a constant tv changing the channel getting on my nerves and um yeah i just i just live with it and it, sometimes it doesn't sometimes i can calm it down at night but most of the time i cannot That's why uh, last year I, I started waking up super early, started waking up at five in the morning and that was like super helpful because by, by the time nine, 10 o'clock rolled around, uh, my brain was even ready for, for sleep and it helped me sleep better. But lately it's just been relentless, not letting me sleep. Let's smooth this out a little bit, see what we're working with. Just needed a bit more value difference uh, to give the arm, you know, that cylindrical shape. Uh, some of these shadows are going to appear a little bit out of context since she doesn't have her, you know, her moss dress colored in. But once uh, once I put that in, it will start to make more sense. The, the shadows here, like this one here, that just kind of seems to make her arm look deformed 
but once she has her moss dress colored in, it will make sense. There we go, that's starting to look a little bit better. Let's add a little bit more of the terracotta. If I happen to miss any of your questions, don't hesitate to ask again. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I lose them in the chat. I don't do it intentionally. Try to get to everyone's questions. Let's go back to the Kaput Mortem Violet. Just darken things up a little bit, give it more three-dimensional shape. Shade name roughly translates to deadhead. Yes. Yep. We have established that. It's a very unique name. The funny thing is I I don't I don't know if I'd associate it with violet but it yeah it I mean the deadhead part is not even really the the strangest part of the name The association with violet is kind of odd too But it's a nice color. I, I really like this color a lot. Getting a lot of mileage out of it on the skin here. Just between these two colors, just getting kind of the full spectrum of, of what I need for the skin. Uh, can I ask, please, the light source on the right arm? Uh, the light source on the right arm is a uh, floor light. Floor light shining up, in it, shining up to her. Uh, could you get similar results on pastel mat? Uh, you might be able to. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of experience working on pastel mat with colored pencils. Um, and you're gonna have 
the, you're just going to have a bit of the grain showing through uh, since it's a rougher paper than this here. But, I mean, depending on how you define similar, then, yeah, you could probably get relatively similar results. But one of the things that I'm doing here is I'm letting the, the color of this gray paper show through a lot. I'm not really covering up the paper entirely. I did on the planet, but on her skin here, I'm using the gray to my advantage, letting some of it show through. I'm being a little bit looser with the application of the pencils. I'm not going for, I, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it looking like a drawing here. So letting some of the paper show through and whereas, I, I don't know, depending on the color you choose of pastel matte, it's probably gonna look quite a bit different if you let that paper show through. Uh, when you switch the classic kaput and the violet one side by side, you can see the violet tint. Uh, I, well, I mean, I see the violet in the color. I see the, the, the red-brown. I mean, I, I would say it's closer it, it's closer to red than violet, in my opinion. But I can see where it comes from. Not totally oblivious. They probably use violet pigment in this color which is most likely where they get the violet from. Um, polychromos are Prismacolor? Um, I'm gonna have to go with Prismacolor. Yeah, just because they've kind of been my favorite pencils for pretty much since I started colored pencils. They were my first colored pencils. I generally use them exclusively, uh, but on this project, I'm not, I, I didn't intend to share the exact colors that I'm using, but uh, on this project, for the people that wanted to follow along, um, the reference photo and the line art and everything, well actually there is no line art for this project, uh, because I recently did a tutorial on, a two-part tutorial on the gridding method, and I wanted everyone to, to use the grid method to draw this, since it's so simplistic and you don't have to be exact on the dress, you don't have to be exact on the headdress thing or her hair. Um, so... Use some of the white to just bring in a little bit of the light source. This this arm isn't lit up like this arm uh, because the the her body is blocking the light. So it doesn't have nearly as much of a highlight. Let's use the blender now and kind of smooth out the graininess. Oh, that's, that is super interesting, Stefania. Yeah, thanks for that trivia, that 
that pigment color trivia. I can definitely see that. Yeah. Kaput mortem being the color of dried blood. Yeah, I can, I can see it. Yeah, like a scab. She has scab colored skin. Yeah, it's a great color. Uh, which is cheap, but good. Wait, what? Uh, what is a cheap, good white pencil? Oh, uh, just the Prismacolor white is perfect. Yeah, the Prismacolor white pencil is fantastic. I think it works really well. I don't I don't make a big thing about white colored pencil. I think they I think they all work pretty much the same, which is essentially barely at all. I think I might do a little bit more layering on that and then I'll call it done. It looks, it looks almost strange. Um, one thing I, I definitely want to do, it. I want to kind of increase the sharpness of the back edge of her arm. I feel like it's just a little bit too all over the place. There, there. Just to increase the the sharpness that defines her arm a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the terracotta and that'll probably be it. This will smooth out some of that transition a little bit better. Just give her skin a bit more saturation, a bit more life to it. Uh, did I post a video for when you previously did the planet? Yeah, it's it's last week's live stream. I, I streamed it last Thursday. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that looks good. So I'll just move it and I'll zoom out. That way you guys get uh, like the picture more in perspective or whatever. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all I'm gonna do for today. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the live stream uh, and learned something. Uh, am I still on the same two colors? Yes, yes, I, I only used the Kaput Mortem and the Terracotta. I mean, I did I did use a little bit of the black and white um, sparingly, but I, I, aside from like the actual color of her skin, I did only use these two colors and that's it. Um, aside from that, uh, thank you guys so much for coming by. Hopefully I, you know, brightened your Thursday up a tiny bit. Um, be sure to give the live stream a thumbs up and uh, I'll be streaming again next Tuesday. We'll, I'll continue on the uh, the pastel project and uh, yeah that pretty much does it. If you want to if you want to help support the channel you can always uh, sign up over on Patreon. Uh, you can buy one of my courses. I have colored pencil and pastel courses if you are interested in learning 
uh, the medium. So you can find that on my website. I have a link for them in the description. But aside from that, uh, you guys have a fantastic rest of your Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your week and weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you on Tuesday. Take care. Peace.